Welcome back to Positive Sum Gaming. The Baron's going to be flying solo today, and we're looking at Europa Universalis 4. I got a personal request to highlight some of the differences between 3 and 4, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be playing as Switzerland, since they are notoriously neutral. We'll be trying to maintain that neutrality, although mostly I'm just going to be discussing gameplay mechanics. So let's start up with our tabs here. Government. One of the biggest mechanical changes is in Monarch points. Your Monarch is now a pretty big deal. They had statistics in the past, but now a lot of your actions are done based on how many Monarch points you have built up. You still have three categories, Administrative, Diplomatic, and Military. And those go up on a monthly basis at a base point of three, but they get bonuses depending on a few things, one of them being your leader. Uh, because Switzerland is a republic, we have an elected leader, or a syndic, I believe, as they refer to their president. And you start with just a baseline leader who's got baseline stats, not quite sure why they do it this way, but usually within a month or two, you will then get a new leader for no good reason. So I expect any minute now, this guy who's just got 3-3-3 three, three, three is going to be replaced with someone with a random roll. But So because I have this guy right now, I'm gaining 6 points in each of the statistics on a monthly basis. And a lot of what you do is going to be done with those. Advisors are still present. They still have their little special abilities, like increasing your production efficiency, reducing your revolt risk. They have an additional ability that they increase the amount of power points that you get in their respective statistic by a certain number. So your, your lowest end guys, it's one, and then as much as three. And the plus three guys are really expensive as you can see uh, it's 143 just to hire him and then nine a month in upkeep but so if your uh, monarch or president in our case is really lacking in one area or you just really need power points in one particular area you can hire an advisor less for his little special ability than for the additional power points that he'll be giving you every month Government types can be changed once again. That's pretty well dependent on your administrative technology level, though, so you have to get that up before you can go upgrading governments. Uh, diplomacy. Uh, here's a fun new feature, rivals. You can select up to three rivals, your choice, entirely your choice. And you'll get some bonuses in uh, hostile actions against them, as you can see here. Uh, you're more likely to get alliances with the enemies of your rival. You get plus 25% prestige from defeating them in battle. No trade efficiency penalty when you're embargoing a rival. Plus 20% spy offense against them. And it costs 33% less diplomatic power points when you're making a demand of provinces in a peace treaty agreement. You can only have a certain amount of diplomatic relations with countries. Uh, if, say for instance, I wanted to get military access from Austria, that would be one. And then I came down and made an alliance with the Venetians, that would be two. Uh, out of my cap of four right now. You can have more than one diplomatic item going with a single country and it won't count against you multiple times so I have like military access with the Venetians and then I also get an agreement to have fleet basing rights with the Venetians that would still just be one diplomatic relation because it's two items but with one nation and then of course you have your diplomatic reputation which makes it harder or easier to get nations to agree to things that you want and if you exceed your 
relations cap, which is possible just because I have a max of four. I, I can go over that if I want to. But then you start taking a hit to your diplomatic reputation, which will make it more difficult to get diplomatic actions completed in the future. And those are the major changes on the diplomatic page. The economy doesn't look too different, but the biggest difference here is tied in with technology. The technology tree is no longer dependent upon your economy. Europa 3, your technological advances were pulled straight from your monthly cash. So your technology advanced based on how much money was getting thrown into it, and that was, it, it was not like, I'm going to choose to throw this much money at it. It was just automatically drawn straight from how much you were making every month based on you know the sliders. That's no longer the case. Your economy does not fuel your technology. Your technology is now based off of the monarch point system, which kind of frees up your economy to do other things. Inflation is still present. You can uh, now reduce it using Monarch Power Points. You can punch 75 administrative points into reducing inflation. It'll drop it by 2%. The trick there being that it has to be at least at 2% or higher before you can even do that as an option. Uh, war taxes is still an option that you can do. War exhaustion is another thing that's that's still present, but you can now spend Monarch points to reduce your war exhaustion. And that costs like 75 as well, I think. And I think that might be diplomatic points. Uh, the rest of the sliders are the same. Colonial maintenance, missionary maintenance, army and fleet maintenance. Uh, nothing revolutionary there. You can still take out loans. Uh, trade. They have switched up trade considerably, so much so that I don't even really remember how trade works in Europa 3. It was fairly convoluted. Uh, your international reputation was tied into it big time. If you did any sort of aggressive expansion at all, it pretty much killed your ability to make any respectable amount of cash in trade. That's no longer the case here. And owning a trade node is no longer as much of a big deal. I'm going to turn down this alliance offer from the Palatinate. Uh, owning a trade node is no longer as important as it was. It doesn't give you as huge of an advantage as it did in Europa 3. So there's less motivation to be attacking Venice or Lubeck trying to get their trade nodes. And there's less motivation to you know, make your own trade node. In fact, I don't think you even can build your own trade node in this one. The uh, it's kind of set. I'm going to switch over to the trade map mode here. You can see how it's spread out. And so the way this works now is you see these little uh, arrow pads. These indicate the direction that trade is flowing. And so what happens is you can you know, stick your merchant in a trade node to collect from that trade node, but you can only do that in nodes that you own a province in. So for me, you can see Switzerland here, I have three provinces that belong to the Frankfurt trade node, so that allows me to send a merchant to Frankfurt to collect cash from it. And then I have two provinces, Waldstadt and uh, Garbunden here, that belong to the Venetian trade node, so I have a merchant in Venice from the start collecting money from the Venetian trade node. I could not say come up here to Antwerpen and I am not allowed to collect money from the Antwerpen node because I do not own a province that sends trade to the Antwerpen trade node. What you can do is attempt to steer trade in your direction. Both of my merchants are currently in nodes collecting money, but if I were to, say, send a merchant over here to Vienne in Bohemian territory, he wouldn't be collecting money from this node. He would be attempting to steer outgoing trade 
to a node where I can collect it. So in this case, Frankfurt. And that's what these other little boxes with the arrows are here. These aren't additional trade nodes. This is the amount of cash that's flowing up that path. So as you can see from Wien here, Wien is getting you know 2.8 coming into it, and then outgoing up toward uh, Lubeck there. Nothing's going out toward Lubeck in that direction. We've got 1.13 that's heading in the direction of Frankfurt, and 0.27 that's heading down toward Venice. So that's favoring me right now. But if I wanted to try and increase those numbers in Frankfurt's favor anymore, I could station a merchant here. And so if you get, uh, you know, the idea is as you keep building up merchants, you just keep placing them in locations to try and daisy chain as much money in the direction of your collection trade node as possible. So you know, I'll set a guy up in Wien, I'll get another guy that I'll set up in Krakow, I'll get another guy that I'll send down to you know, Constantinople and start trying to filter stuff up from Constantinople more towards Frankfurt. Uh, and so as far as like actual collection goes, that's based off of your trade power. So the bottom number here next to the little gold coins is of course the amount of money that's in that trade node. The upper number is your trade power. I currently have 11.8 in Frankfurt, so I'm getting a decent chunk from Frankfurt. I have considerably less in Venice. I only have 2.53, so I'm barely getting anything from Venice at all. And there's some things that you can do to increase that. Most of them are around buildings. There's buildings that directly affect your trade. I can't pull any of those up right now because my technology is not high enough to build those. But there's marketplaces and things that increase your local trade power. So if I start building you know, a marketplace in Bern and Zurich and St. Gaian, it's going to boost my trade power in the node that those belong to, which would be Frankfurt. And so I'd be able to collect more money from Frankfurt. Uh, there is also trade steering. There is a modifier to that. You can take some national ideas and things that will increase your trade steering power. You know, Right now, mine's just baseline 0% but you can boost that trade steering efficiency so that things are getting pushed in your favor more. And then you can bolster your trade efficiency as well. Uh, that'll come just straight through increasing your diplomatic technology, and there's ideas and things that will increase that as well. And that'll boost your trade power and your collecting and whatnot. Um, this this screen is kind of nice. This shows all of the active trade nodes, how much money they bring in, how much trade power you have, how much money you're collecting from that, and you can recall and send merchants just from this screen without having to you know, scan around the field and find the node that you want. You can just come to this screen and deal with it right there. Uh, and then this little pie chart up here shows you how much of your income on a monthly basis is coming from trade. So you can see how dependent you are upon your trade for your monthly income. And whether or not you want to do something about that, increase your taxes, or continue to focus on trade. And the Austrians are attacking the Bohemians to try and revoke their electorate. How nice of them. Alright, so technology. Here again, technology is no longer attached to your economy. It is now based on your monarch points, and it's something that you have to actively choose to do. Uh, it's pretty expensive. Uh, the baseline cost for most tech upgrades is 600 points in their respective fields. That can be pretty spendy. I'm a member of the HRE. That gives you some bonuses. Your neighbor, if you've got Western tech tree neighbors, that gives you like a minus 5% bonus. Uh, Imperial Integrity in the HRE gives you a minus 10% off of the cost. That's pretty huge. So HRE members get it a little bit easier trying to upgrade their technology. And it, it, it can be a pain to get your tech upgraded sometimes as you know, events will keep happening that will be drawing off of your monarch point pool. Yeah, lines off from Wartenberg, no thank you. 